All right, welcome to the update online edition. Uh, I'm Travis Cobb. I'm sitting here with an LSU student who is from the Ukraine, Anya Barishpol. Uh, Anya, thanks for joining me today. No problem, happy to be here. All right, um, I've just, earlier this week, I wanted to do a segment on Ukraine. I wanted to lay down all the knowledge I had on this subject and just let the viewers know how I felt about what's going on in Ukraine. The problem is, I have no idea what's going on in this country. So if you could, or well, that country, this yeah. country too, but yeah. Ukraine. Can you just kind of give me a basic synopsis of what's going on? Help, help my American ears. Okay, so um, when people think about Ukraine, they immediately associate it with Russia. And the, thing, the big thing with that is that Russia at one point was able to make a lot of money and kind of sustain itself with oil and gas. Ukraine, since the fall of the Soviet Union, hasn't ever really gone back. The economy's been horrible. The 90s were dedicated to the mob ruling the streets. Um, it's a great country that had a lot of potential, but that never realized it because corruption has always been a part of society and of government. Um, a popular thing people over there always say is that the mob is now the government, and that's kind of how it is. Um, I'm personally from uh, Donetsk, which is where our current, well, he just got impeached, but the president of the, the Ukraine, he was from Donetsk. And mm -hmm. so that is the more pro-Russian side, and that's kind of like the unofficial capital of the more pro-Russian side of Ukraine, as opposed to Kyiv, which is more nationalist and the actual capital. Um, what's happening is people are fed up on both sides. Corruption is rampant. Uh, the economy is just, you know, horrible and so there's not a lot of opportunity and people are seeing their their bank accounts diminish everything is just kind of bad um, and so people are sick of it and people blame the government um, the issue with that is uh, a lot of people over here are reporting how you know the the Ukraine was trying to be a part of the EU and that's how they needed to be mm -hmm. but what people don't realize is that Ukraine has really close ties with Russia and so since 2004 um, it's been a lot of political uh, back and forth between the pro EU side and the pro Russia side and that's kind of where everything is coming to a head right now okay uh, th and that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about um, being in America and seeing uh, the coverage that our fine cable networks and network news have to offer, what, what are they missing here? What, what, what is the big part in Ukraine that they're swinging and missing on? I think the biggest part is obviously the fact that we did go through the Cold War over here and people are very anti-Russia. And um, I don't think people realize the fact that certain countries, Russia is their ally and that Russia is a good thing in certain countries. Um, I hear a lot about people, t like George Clooney made a video saying that Timoshenko, which is, she just got released out of prison, was a political prisoner trying- Timoshenko. Timoshenko, okay. yes. Uh, was Yulia Timoshenko, or if you want me to say it in Ukrainian, I can do it later. I'll but. slow it down later. Okay, um, yeah, she is kind of like bringing democracy to the Ukraine, and she's pro-America, and she's pro-EU, but the thing that you don't realize is living in America is that America has no reason to be allies with the Ukraine or help Ukraine, and Ukraine can't really gain anything from the but, United States. But the world loves us, and, <laughs> and they always have, and we, we protect it like, like a gentle giant policeman oh. or a babysitter that's on a power trip. We are, we are there to make sure this is, this is what we do in the world, is we want to make sure that everyone thinks, oh, okay, America over Russia. That's, that's why we won the Cold War, is it not? Someone get my logo back up. <laughs> is, is that the network? No. I guess I, you know, I, we said something bad about the network news and yeah, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> All right. But what, what's the point of winning the Cold War if not every other country is going to follow us? See, I think a really big misconception is that uh, a lot of Ukrainians and Russians are anti-America and that's definitely not the case. Like a lot of the uh, people that I talk to over there that are my age, they love America. They love American culture. They love speaking English. A lot of people are learning English over there because they think it's important. Uh, but it the thing, is, yeah. But the thing is you may be the pushy babysitter, the hot pushy babysitter, but at the end of the day you're not bringing money in. No, we're taking it. Yes, at exactly. At an exorbitant rate. <laughs> and we kind of need money to sustain ourselves and to survive. And so that's where Russia comes in. Um, a lot of trade agreements are made with Russia that help benefit the Ukraine because uh, where you are the hot babysitter, Russia is 
the older sister that is financially stable and actually will give you a helping hand when needed. I'm still very much okay with America being labeled as the hot babysitter. <laughs> but um, we're, we're talking about Russia and y Ukraine. Mm -hmm. now, for the Soviet Union yeah. with Ukraine, what was the relationship like? You know, what, what, what did you see? You were, I mean, you were six, but, yeah. you know, you remember what it was like to live in Ukraine during that time. Yes. What, uh, in the immediate downfall of the Soviet Union, yeah. what, what sort of uh, was different about the country? Well, I guess a really good example I can bring up is my name. Um, you said my name is Anya, and it is, but um, it's spelled with a G, and that is because... It's gangster. It, it is. It okay. stands for gangster, but we won't tell anyone. Um, okay. <laughs> but the thing that happened was that Ukraine went through a huge nationalist movement where they denied their history with Russia, and they said that we're going to be like this independent country. And so after that happened, they made a new law that said that any name that was even remotely close to Russian would be translated to its Ukrainian counterpart. I was born in the Russian, exclusively Russian-speaking part of the country. So okay. I was given, given a Russian name, Anna. And uh, when we went to go get my birth certificate, it just had an extra G on it because Ukrainian nationalists wanted it that way. And that's how the government operated at that time. Can that work for like my name, too? I, I don't think the G, but if I could just add another letter to the front, like in Louisiana. <laughs> uh, I'm from Texas, so I'm going to botch this horribly. But uh, instead of naming someone junior, they get a T in front of their name. Yeah. So I could, you know, I could see myself changing it to T Travis. Yeah. There you go. Or G, G Anya. Is there anything um, more important than <laughs> names about Ukraine that uh, Americans, me especially, if I'm going to rant on this, yes, need need to know? Um, about the current situation. The current situation, okay, a few factors. Um, a lot of people are saying that Ukraine needs to be a part of the EU without looking at the regulations that EU like said that they would put on Ukraine if Ukraine were to join. Um, Ukraine wouldn't be able to get a Euro passport, so no Ukrainian citizen would actually be free to travel around Europe. So that kind of sucks. Um, another thing is that uh, it was estimated that Ukraine would lose about 200 not, excuse me, $20 billion in revenue from um, trade agreements that would be cut short with Russia. Um, when asked if, if the EU would subsidize them, EU said that they would only loan them $500 million. That um, in a tanking economy, that is devastating. So that's something that can't happen. Um, I think that a lot of the times people don't realize that EU has a political agenda. It's not only made to like help other countries and so a lot of a lot of people are saying that EU wants Ukraine to kind of stick it to Putin which I understand Putin is a tyrant in his own country but um Ukraine But their Olympics. Yes. They were yes. they were so well not gay but <laughs> <laughs> the fluffy bear was beautiful. I I just like the dancing marshmallows. Of course. In the opening ceremonies. After that I didn't watch. Oh. But Oh you missed you know, out. Well so much so much national you know, dancing. I think there was hockey. I don't really we don't, we don't really understand that too much around here. You don't understand the cold, <laughs> Texan. Well, hopefully uh, people who see this got to get, look, get to know a little bit more about yeah, Ukraine. hopefully. And I uh, you know, just want to thank you again for stopping by. Uh, thank you for, for this full interview, I guess. Just watch online. That's where it is. TigerTV.tv. <laughs> the update's got its own page. Anya Barishpol. I'm Travis Cobb. Go update yourself. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome.